morning everyone I haven't seen you for a really long time just wondering how are you going okay so um, basically today we would like to go through to help you with the idea of the tree diagrams and to calculate the probabilities okay so this is the task you've been working on in your pokey probability assignment so um, for today's learning purpose we want to figure out how to calculate the probabilities using a tree diagram okay so there are three levels of achievement that we have the first level is uh, to be able to draw the tree diagram the second is to calculate the independent probability using your tree diagram the last one is to deal with a more complex situation which is the one we are doing okay so to begin with let's have a look at the following okay so as a starter if i flip one fair coin okay think about what is the probability that i'll get a head and think about the probability that i'll get a tail okay um so can you try to think about that you can post the video here and try to write down your answer when you're ready just go back okay All right, i hope you got the answer so you probably know that both probability will be a half the reason for that is because when we calculate the probability, uh, we say the probability of any event is equal to the number of possible outcomes. So in this case, if I flip one coin, so the number of uh, possible outcomes in this case will be just the head or the tail. So in this case, um, the number is just going to be one. Now, whereas the um, number of total outcome will be two because we can have a head or we can have a tail so it's one divided by two okay right so the second question is similar so if we have a ball um so 10 balls in the bag and three of them are red and seven of them are blue okay so and i randomly take one ball from the bag so what would be the probability that i get a red one and What's the probability that I'll get a blue one? Okay, you can pause here and think and come back with the solution. All right, so hopefully you get this. So if we say we have three red balls, so that means the possible outcome in this case will be these three red balls. We have three. And the number of total outcomes, we have 10 balls in total, so we divide that by 10. So the first probability is going to be 3 over 10. Now the second one, the blue one, we got seven blue ones there, and therefore it's ten seven over ten. Okay, so now in both examples, if we can convert that to a percentage, that will help us to understand the situation. So the first um, one is going to be three divided by ten is zero point three. Remember how we convert that to the percentage? We need to multiply that by a hundred percent, and so now excuse my terrible drawing. Uh, this is what happens when we use the mouse to draw number. So all right, so to multiply by a hundred percent, so in this case we'll get a thirty percent. Similarly, when we have seven over ten. Putting that into the calculator, we have 0 0.7. Okay, we times this number by 100%, and therefore, oops, what's going on? Uh, therefore, we'll get a 70%. Okay. All right. It is going to be just 70%. Um, one interesting thing you'll find is if we add these two things up 30% and 70% we'll get 100% job so that means that will include every single possibilities okay because 100% is uh, the total probabilities okay all right so let's check the next question so what would happen if i flip two coins at the same time so what would be the probability that I flip two heads? And what will be the probability that I flip one head and one tail? Okay, take your time and uh, when you're ready, just come back 
through the video. Okay, remember you can draw a diagram or table. So in the next page, I'm going to show how a table might help you to understand the situation. So if I have um, these two probabilities, uh, say if I flip a coin, so the one on top is my coin one and the one on the side is my coin two. So H stands for head and T stands for tail. So the first block, which means H and H, that basically means both coins are heads, okay? The second one will be T and H, means the first one is a tail and the second one is a head. So remember, coin one on top, coin two on the side, okay? So this one will be H and T, because the first, tail, uh, the first coin is a head and the second coin is a tail. The last one is going to be T and T. Okay, what does that tell me? Okay, that tells me I have four um, outcomes as a total outcome. And if I flip two heads, that means there's only one situation. So one out of four. So that is how I figure out the probability. And similarly, if I want to figure out if I have one head and one tail. Now, if we check in this table, I would find two different scenarios, okay? The first one I'll have is this tail and head. So one head, one tail, so easy as that. And the other one is this one, H and T. So one head and one tail, okay? Good as that. So in this case, I have two possible outcomes. And the total number stays the same, it's going to be four. Okay, so it's going to be 2 over 4. So if we try to put that in the calculator, we'll find the first one is going to be 25% or 0 0.25 if you prefer. The second one is 2 over 4 to divide by 4 is going to be 50%. So that's about half. Okay. This is my poor writing. Um, I'm trying my best to write with my mouse, but um, that's how I go. All right, so basically this is what happens when we flip two coins. Now the situation will develop in a bit more complex. So on the assignment you're working on, you have a pokey machine with three different, um, you know, three different tabs. So in this case, you need to have a three steps um, thing. So table is not going to work. So instead, we will need to think about um, the tree diagram. Okay. Um, so we'll come back to the end rules a little bit later. Okay, so we'll talk about the tree diagrams first. Now, a tree diagram is a way to represent um, the probability of two or more. So remember, the table can only represent the probability of you know two events in a row. But tree diagram is more powerful because we can look at more events. Potentially, um, can be infinity as long as you can draw that. Okay, so to calculate the probability of a tree diagram, you just need to multiply along the branches. Okay, I'll explain what that means in a minute. So, say if I flip two coins, now this time instead of drawing a table, I like to draw a tree diagram. So, the first time when I flip the coin, there are two things that could happen I can get a head or I can get a tail. Okay, so the probability for each of them will be half. Uh, it's fairly simple, it's a fair coin, so the chance is split up into halves. Okay, so and if we flip the second coin, okay, so check this very carefully. So um, if we flip the second coin, now in the first scenario, if I get a head, I flip the second coin, I can get a head or tail. And the probability is, as again, a half, because they uh, these two events are independent, they are not relevant. So it uh, doesn't matter what I get in coin one, coin two is a freshly new start. So the probability will not be influenced by the previous one. Okay. So the similar situation, if we um, check the second part, still we will get the heads and we'll get the head tail. And the probability for each of them is just a half. All right, so how do we use this tree diagram? So this means if I say I want to figure out the probability of having two heads, I see this part, it says the probability is a half. And I see the second line says the probability is a half. That means 
when I try to find the probability of two heads, so head and head, I just need to simply multiply these two. And I get a quarter as my probability. Okay. So if I want to figure out what's the probability of getting a head first and getting a tail next, same idea because the first line says a half, the second line says a half. We multiply these two numbers, we get a quarter. Uh, as you can probably predict, we'll get a very similar thing. So the probability of getting a tail and getting a head will be again one quarter. And getting a tail and getting a tail is going to be one quarter. Now, um, so if um, you want to draw a tree diagram, you remember you need to write all possible outcomes. That means when we flip a coin, we have head and we have tails. Okay, remember to write all possible outcomes. So you can't just write a head and leave this one empty. Uh, that means you are not getting the whole picture of that. Okay. Now, um, once you finish drawing everything into that, you can multiply along the branches. So you just need to multiply every single number along the branches. So in this case, you'll be able to find the probability. Okay, take your time to take some notes, and when you are ready, uh, we'll move on to the next example. Okay, so um, say I have a bag of counters, okay, bag of counters. Three of them are blue and seven are red, right? So I pick one counter out without looking at it, then put it uh, back in the bag, and I then pick another one. So what is the probability that I pick out a red counter and a blue counter? Okay, so to solve this problem, we still use our tree diagram. So what we do is we can basically draw a branch. So on this edge of the branch, I need to think about what can be, what can be my possible outcomes. What could happen? So I can get a blue chip or I can get a red chip. So two possible. Um, Right, so keep going. If I keep doing, okay, so the probability for the red one, because there's seven red, so it's seven over ten. All right, the probability for the blue one is going to be three over ten because I have three blues. Okay, now remember after I, you know, pick out one and I put it back, so in the back, I still have ten chips and three blue and seven red. Nothing has changed. So in the second round, in the second round, technically I can get red and blue, and the probability will still be the same. So it will be 7 over 10 and 3 over 10. Okay? So they're the same. And then similarly at the bottom, you'll see the whole thing happening again 7 over 10 and 3 over 10. Alright? So now, if we Calculate the probability. Okay, we want to know that the probability of having a red counter and a blue counter. So, um, if we have a red one and have a blue one, that's good. Or if we have a blue one and a red one, remember in this case the order uh, doesn't really matter that much. So pick out a red and a blue. Doesn't mean we have to precisely follow the order. So this one also is a blue and a red means a red and blue. Okay. So we can have, well, the first line, we just go step by step. The first one will be, as again, we multiply the probability along the line, which is 49%. So the middle one is going to be 21%, because 3 by 7. And the probability of having a blue and red is going to be 21%, as again, 3 over 10 by 7 over 10. And the last one, getting two blues, will be... 9 over 10, so which is 3 over 10, 3 over 10, multiply, so we got 9%. So we want to figure out the probability of a blue and a red, or a red and blue. So we have these two, and then we just need to basically add them up. So if we add them up, so we can say the probability of one red and one blue is 20%, 21% plus 21% is equal to 42%. So it's um. It's your choice of how you want to organize that. So you can have 42%, which is fine. Or you can have simplify that to 21 over 50. Um, so in the assessment, sometimes it asks you to work out the percentage, whereas others ask you to work out the decimals. 